All right, Sony XM2000R. We're gonna do one ohm, 40 hertz. And one ohm per channel, it's rated 1,000 watts at 14.4 or something. Oh. We don't know, 1,000 watts per channel. Let's see what it does. My name is Derek and I do YouTube videos about audio equipment, videos about audio. I know it doesn't make sense, but if you guys enjoy that type of stuff, you might enjoy subscribing to my channel and I'd appreciate it. So stick around for the cool content and don't be surprised if you see a big dummy. The name Sony means something different to you depending on your age. PlayStation 4, you guys who like to play video games nowadays know Sony by this. If you're old school, you probably know about the Walkmans from way back in the day. As far as car audio goes, Sony Explode. Any of you guys know these amps and don't think a lot of them? Well, Sony did make good amps. These XM series from back in the 90s, mid 90s were really good amps. In the early 90s, Sony introduced the Mobile ES series. Here are some of the amps you can see here on Hi-Fi Vegas channel. It's got the M3 and the M1. You can actually check the video description where below where he tested the M3, did a dyno test on it. But yeah, later in the 90s, they had these Mobile ES Explode versions. I've actually tested one of these before. We call this Big Red. Very nice amplifier. So what are we talking about today? Well, believe it or not, friends, a $4,000 Sony amplifier. Yes, it's hard to tell by the picture here how big this amp is, so we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's check out the 1999 Car Audio and Electronics directory. Here you can see listed under Sony Mobile ES, the XM2000R. Check out that MSRP, $4,000. Buddy JDR brought this all the way from Texas so we could test it. And yes, he also brought some other amps along with some of my amps here. And he brought brother Hi-Fi Vega as well. So we had some fun testing some amps. There's several coming up, so stay tuned. But for right now, we're gonna talk about the XM2000R. Check it out at 28 and 5 eighths length by 17 and 5 eighths width by about four and 5 eighths thick. Now it's really difficult sometimes to visualize something just based on numbers. So thanks to my buddy in Norway here for providing this video. Check out the amp in the back of this VW Golf. It is just massive. And yeah, those are 18 inch subs. Not just kidding, they're five and a quarters. But still, the amp takes up almost the whole trunk. Very cool SQ install here. And we got some build pictures coming up as well. You can see again, compared to him, how large this amplifier is. And here it is compared to the other monster amps I'm showing. Again, it's a little closer, so it's hard to really see how big it is. So let's put it beside the JBL A6000. And for you guys who don't know how big the JBL A6000 is, there it is compared to me. I'm six foot four. This amp is massive. Yeah, this is one of my favorite pictures here, the Sony and big bald me. But just look at that. How impressive is that? Now, speaking of impressive, this 2002 Trailblazer from this mother over in Sweden. Now check this install out, check out the back. Look at this, she's got three of these amplifiers in the back. She's one of the best to sound three consecutive years. Here's some details about her system, Alpine F1 status, head unit and processor, scan speak mids, mid basses and highs, a JL Audio 10W3 subwoofer, three Sony XM2000R amps, Alpine PDX M12. Now the Sony's or powering the mids, mid basses, and tweeters. Yes, not powering the subs. The Alpine is powering the subs. Big shout out to Victor for sharing this to me. This is his mother's car. He did the install and did the pictures here. Just amazingly impressive here. And the mids, mid basses, and highs were changed out to rainbow speakers. But anyway, just wanted to share that. Thanks again to Victor. Now back to the Sony XM2000R. What is this thing rated? Well, 4 ohms is rated 300 by 2, 600 by 2 at 2 ohms, 1000 by 2 at 1 ohm, or 2000 by 1 at 2 ohms bridged. Let's take a better look at the exterior of the amp. It has dual 8 gauge speaker outputs, and they're nicely gold plated there, and it's got some adjustments here on the top. It has the LED lights 
for the status for the power and protection each channel it also has some adjustments up here for the gain for the base controls for each channel things like that the crossover filters etc Next up, we'll highlight a few items on the amp. You can see left and right, there's direct switch and filter for each channel individually, as well as two circuit breakers. That's right, you'll be breaking some circuits like a home amplifier. Then we have remote connection. We have left line in, right line in, test tone, and then left and right line out. Then we have dual four gauge power and ground. Not to be a big tease, but stick around till after the dyno test and we'll show off the amp guts. Talk about the internals. Let's fire this bad boy up. All right, so all the tests today will be done in stereo. First off, let's start off with four ohms, 1% THD. We're also gonna use 40 Hertz for all the tests. It's rated 300 by two at 14.4 volts and you can see we easily got that 383 379 right at 380 watts just a little bit over 14.4 volts now don't freak over this 101.5 amps is 52 percent efficient this is a class ab this is not designed for efficiency this is a sound quality amp now let's try two ohms one percent thd certified 40 hertz rated 600 watts by two and oh yes, 764, 753, over 760 watts per channel. Again, current pull, 198.8 amps, 53% efficient. Don't write home about efficiency. We're all good though. Let's try one ohm certified, 40 hertz, 1% THD. It's rated 1000 by two. Oh man, but we didn't quite have 14.4 volts, but we had 1000 watts on one of the channels, 307 amps, woo efficiency. Smack your mama 45%. You big Let's give it a little kick drum action. One ohm dynamic. 40 hertz. Let's see how it can handle that surge of power. Not too bad. Not super powerful, but still nicely over the rated power. You notice the channels are a lot closer here than they were on the last test. So we put some stress under it. And yeah, look at that current pull 335.6. That was an inrush current, so we didn't provide the efficiency numbers. Now, let's check out the amp guts. From what I can tell, they use really high quality components on this Sony amplifier. The Nichicon gold capacitors there, the rail caps, those are 10,000 microfarad. And on the other side, they've also got filter caps that are also the Nichicon golds. This amp has four power supplies. If you'll notice, there's two separate boards here. I'm going to show you a graphic here where you can see the jumper between with the little board with little wires. I'm not a big fan of that, but otherwise it's very high quality. We talk about my thoughts, not that y'all really care anyway, but this amp is big. You can see here compared to the Phoenix Gold, the one, which is rated 12,000 watts. It's a pretty big amp. This is an SQ amp again, and compared to the JBL a 6,000 GTI, which is just another massive amp. But again, don't compare this to the Sundown NS2 or stuff like this. This is a sound quality amp. This is Sony's shining moment in sound quality. Appreciate it for what it is. Sony is coming back to the market with head units like this, super high end, the GS9. So yeah, hats off to Sony for making sound quality important again. Here's my boys hanging out the night of the OSS meet. Hi-Fi Vega, JDR, and some big dummy in the middle. Thanks to these guys as well as Hakan and Victor for sharing all the goodies they shared me about the Sony amp. As always, thanks to my Patreon subscribers, patreon.com slash oldschoolstereo. Make sure you check it out. Big D Wiz, until next time, I'm out here. Big Sony on the bench, which is almost bigger than the bench. And Jason is gonna flip it on, I think, right? Now remember, when you flip it on, you're not truly gonna flip it on until we flip this switch here. So you can flip it first, and then we'll flip the switch, and that should start it up, because that's the remote turn on switch here. All right, so I'm gonna hit the breakers yeah, first. Yeah, go ahead and hit the yeah. breakers. Hitting switches.
Okay, no funkiness. Now let's watch Not this. Yeah. And just flip the little switchy and we'll see what it does. There we go.